Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to again singleton pattern. So there's one more famous interview question that uh, how to prevent object creation during the deserialization process. So you must have heard about serialization and the deserialization. It means, let's see, this is my browser class or you can say this is my singleton class where we have its own private constructor and uh, having only one get instance method. It means we are just creating only one object of this particular class, right? That is what the singleton pattern, no other object. So let's see what if your class is actually uh, implementing the serializable interface. Then in that case, let me just write it quickly. Serializable interface, that is what it's actually, I'm importing it and then it's actually implementing the serializable interface. So serializable interface we use whenever we have to use our POSO object. So for example, let's see, you must have seen in the API automation or API serialization and deserialization also if you have any pozo class it means pozo means your java class which is uh, here plain old java objects and whenever you are converting into some other external byte or any other json file or maybe xml file or any uh, byte code then in that case or in the byte stream actually whenever any external byte stream that you are converting it so this process is actually called a serialization but again from the byte stream or json or xml to uh, the POSO, if you are writing it, then in that case, this process is actually called what? This process is actually called the deserialization process. So in the second process, what happens when you convert your XML file or JSON file into the equivalent Java object or Java POSO? So let's see here again, I'm converting into the browser object, right? Then in that case, I'm creating a new object here. So right? So here I'm creating a new browser or I can say a new browser instance I'm going to uh, create here. It means this is a violation of the singleton pattern because uh, I can do n number of uh, deserialization. So every time it will try to create the object of browser class here. So that is what the we have to handle this particular use case as well. So what I'll do here in this particular browser class, I'm implementing the serializable interface. First, I'll show you the quick problem statement here that I'm going to serialize. So I'm first, I'm going to create the instance number one by calling the get instance method. And then I'm just simply using one object output stream, which is having some random obj.txt or JSON file or whatever it is. Let's say I'm using one uh, JSON here. And then uh, I'm doing a, a browser to, let's see, browse, uh, browser to browser.json. It means I'm doing a serialization here. And after that, again, I'm using starting the deserialization mechanism or deserialization process from a browser JSON. I don't have this particular JSON file. This JSON file assume that, okay, we are doing a deserialization from this JSON to this particular object class. So here at line number 21, the deserialization will happen. And uh, see, it's giving me the instance number two of this particular browser class. And then again, I'm printing the hash code of instance one and instance number two. If it's giving me two different hash codes, it means two objects got created here. So see, for example, if I'm running it again, and then you can see here that two different hash codes are coming. It means violation of the singleton. This is not singleton. Singleton is compromising, is getting compromised here, right? So how to resolve this problem? So in order to resolve this problem, in the singleton class, we just need to add what? We just need to add one method that is called read resolve method we have to add it this method will be called during where during the remember this thing very famous interview question during the deserialization process right and this will return what this will return the instance the class the singleton class instance or object it will return the existing object it will return right so this method will be called automatically. We don't need to call it. We just need to define this method. And this method is not there in the serializable uh, interface or any object class. So we don't need to write at the rate overwrite or any, we don't need to overwrite this particular method. We just need to add it here. So see this method will return what? This method will return the object and then um, simple define this method. It is read resolve method. And this method is actually doing what? This method is actually returning. And I'm calling this particular method the current class object. And this get instance method, that is what I'm calling it here. So get instance method is being called, which is having already having this singleton logic. 
if browser equal to be equal to null then only we will create the object and let's see the first object is already created then again it will check the instance is not equal to null return the same object here and i'm making this method with the uh, protected here so that uh, i'm not making it private otherwise during the runtime or at the runtime during the deserialization process it will prevent it so simple use protected or public directly you can use it here right so now i'll do one thing i don't need to write any at the rate override i don't need to call it this method you should always have it in your uh, serializable class or in your singleton class which is implementing the serializable i'm going to run this program and let's see what happens so this time if the hash code is same it means the same instance is actually it's returning so now you can see awesome you see this hash code is exactly same for instance one and instance two so how many objects got created in the memory only one object got created here right so this is how you can just simply do it like this so let's say for example once again if i'm trying to create one more instance number three every time it will just return me one single object here so for example let's see once again i'm writing let's see in one and then in one dot uh, read object and then this is instance number three that is what i'm using it and let's see this is my in number uh, one dot close and uh, this instance number three that i'm going to print the hash code of that once again so let's print the instance three hash code as well here right so it means i'm trying to create three objects during the deserialization process and uh, i mean two objects actually you can say object number two and object number three object number one is already created with the serialization process but here i'm doing two times deserialization it means instance two and instance three that is what i'm going to create and let's see the hash code of all these three objects should be same so you see that the hash code of all these three objects are exactly same it means we just have created only one instance of the class so this is also a, a very famous interview question that how to uh handle singleton with the serialization you just need to add this particular method here read resolve method remember that method name okay which you cannot change the method name this is a exactly predefined method which will be called during the deserialization process here i hope this is clear so thank you so much thanks for watching the read automation labs please subscribe to the channel if you are liking this series i'll see you in the next video till then take care and god bless you all